There was definitely an interest in what tool I use to log my games. The answer is Backlogged.com. Now you don't need tools to help you manage your backlog, but it can make things much better. So let's quickly talk about several tools and how they can help. We'll save the best for first, Backlogged. Backlogged lets you log your favorite games, consolidate your backlog into one place, and see stats about your gaming history. It integrates with the International Games Database so you instantly get the title, cover art, and release dates for any game on any system. It basically automates all of the game metadata entry portion of logging games yourself because you have a nice front-end website that taps into an existing games database, and it does all this while looking very slick. I love the color scheme and the cover art layouts, and while I am a Patreon backer, everything you need from it is free. Your games are marked into general statuses. Played games can include things you've beaten or decided to abandon. I have a personal rating system that I apply to every game I've ever beaten, and the result is this personal history of all these games and ratings in a nice cover art display. You get a different status and thus tab for games you're currently playing to isolate those, and then you have tabs for a backlog and a wishlist. Completely platform agnostic, I drop PC, PS4, Switch games, just everything in this backlog status so I know what my pending game list looks like at a glance across everything. And then while I use the Steam wishlist for Steam games, everything outside of Steam I put into the backlogged wishlist status so I can remember everything else I had my eye on. Game logging is done via a journal system to mark the start and end dates of a playthrough, and whether you completed, retired, or abandoned it. Then toss in the platform and a rating if you want to get all the base stats, with the ability to log extra stuff if you want to. All of which feeds into your stats screen, and that was one of the selling points for me too, I love seeing my personal stats. I did a lot of this via Google Sheets graphs previously, but Backlogged, if you are a Patreon backer, provides a really cool stat screen of everything you put into it. If you want to load tons of historical data, it will obviously take a really long time to populate all of the games and what year you completed them in, but to me, it was worth it to replace what I was doing in Sheets. And finally, lists can be used to keep track of basically whatever you want. I keep track of fun stuff like my personal game of the year lists, just looks nice and editing them is easy. Backlogged just has it all, and while it is missing some automation tools like importing data from Steam or even from your own CSV, once you do get everything you want loaded in, it serves as a fantastic dashboard to your backlog and gaming history. Alright, the next tool probably everyone has already heard of, but... Well, you know, it's a classic for a reason. <laughs> HowLongToBeat.com can be used to get a gauge of how many hours it will take to complete certain games. Super useful for trying to plan out what to play next or what you're getting into with a purchase. If you make an account, it does also have some of the cataloging type stuff that Backlogged has as well, with the ability to mark games as complete and add your own times to the database. And while I don't use it anymore, when I was in the middle of backlogging PC games from five different launchers, I used Playnight to act as a unified PC launcher that puts everything in one place and looks nice. You do need to manually back up your Playnight configurations, there's no cloud accounts or anything, but it acts as that single app to open first and launch any game from there. And a massive pro includes being able to get the time played from games that don't have a method of tracking time played in their original launchers. Like Diablo. For whatever reason. Like why? Anyway, whether you're using Playnight or Steam, it's also nice to use categories that help facilitate the backlog process. Personally, I use categories for what I'm actively playing, what I want to play next, isolate some endless games, and then multiple backlog categories to group games by hour count. Everything I've already played is hidden, so the library is just looking forwards, and I use backlog to look backwards. I switched from genres, which is what most people do, to hour counts for the categories because I can usually remember what kind of game something is, but none of these tools integrate with how long to beat in any way, so it's handy for me to sort of store that information directly in the game library and know how long of an experience I'm getting into. If a big release is around the corner, I don't want to start a massive game. I want something shorter to knock out in the time before the new release, and I don't like constantly having to relook up the game lengths to figure that out. Remember that these tools and organization techniques won't complete the games for you, so if you want some advice on that, I made a video of my top tips after finishing hundreds of games, as well as a follow-up to help manage the time sync of live services. Those will be in the end screen if you're interested. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.